Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Feed Sacks Pearl ever since us. Sure is, Granny. They ain't a family in Beverly Hills gonna have fancier underwear than us. <laughs> the main thing about feed sacks is knowing how long to boil them. You gotta boil out the printing, but not the color. I'd say these are done to a turn. Hot dog, how soon can I eat? <laughs> They ain't for eating, they for wearing. Now, Ellie, you dip them out and ring them. Jethro, you come outside and pick out your pattern. Oh, pattern for what? New drawers. <laughs> Ellie Mae, where's Granny? Oh, she's out back hanging up clothes, pal. My doggies, I'm pleased to see you taking an interest in kitchen work. Well, thank you, pal. Excuse me. Good thing that girl is pretty here at cooking is pitiful. Ellie, I kind of favored these barley sacks for you and me. It's a pretty piece, and the goods has a real expensive feel to it. Ready? There's some new neighbors moving in on the first side. Let's all go over there and tell them howdy and make them feel welcome. You and me can help them unload and settle in. Yeah, and take us some hot bills. Well, no, uh, I mean, uh, let's just get acquainted first. See what they need. Well, come on, Granny. I ain't wasting no more of my time trying to be friendly to those snooty Beverly Hills people. Well, Granny, we ain't met them yet. Uh, we don't know that they snooty. They's rich, ain't they? Appear to be. Well, then they snooty. Well, Uncle Jed's rich, and he ain't snooty. You pick out a pattern. <laughs> Granny, I don't hardly think that it's right for us to judge a woman without... Uh... A woman? Is that who's moving in? Well, I've seen one come out of the house and get into a big limousine. That's all I want to hear. Another Ms. Drysdale. If there's anything snootier than a rich woman, it's one that rides in a limousine. <laughs> back, you jerk. I can't knock on the front door of a mansion like this and ask to use the phone. I am not employed to drive servants to servants' entrances. Oh, come on, Reg, and knock off the protocol. My feet are killing me, and I've only got one day to fix the house for Mrs. Carrington. You're the housekeeper. That's your problem. Okay, you cab stand reject. <laughs> You've been asking for this. Climb out and get him up. Save your threats, Agnes. I do not scare easily. Listen, Reg, how'd you like to take me for a drive tonight? We can park on Mulholland and, uh... Okay, get in. I don't scare easily, but that did it. <laughs> Granny, I'm surprised at you. Back home, you was always the first one to visit a new neighbor. Take him over a pot of vittles and make him feel welcome. That was back home. I've tried for three years out here. I never got nothing but mean mouth, door slammed, and dog bit. <laughs> Big limousine just pulled around the house. Must be that new neighbor woman. Yeah, that's her, all right. She's headed for the back door. Good. Ellie, you go get Duke. We'll give her a big Beverly Hills welcome. Beverly Hills welcome? I'll slam the door in her face and Ellie will 
shit the dog on her. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. How do you do? I'm sorry to bother you. I'm opening the house next door and the phone isn't connected yet. Could I use yours, please? Why, you betcha. Yonder it is. Help yourself. Thank you so much. Jed, did I hear her say please? <laughs> please and thank you. <laughs> By the way, ma'am, uh, we is the clamp. It's this here is Granny and I'm Jed. Well, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Just call me Aggie. I've got to phone the market. There isn't a bite of food in the house. Oh, we'd be pleased to share vittles with you. Share what? <laughs> vittles. Food. We'd be glad to fetch something over to you. I know that it's a chore to cook on moving day. Oh, well, that's awfully nice of you, but I love to cook, as you can see. Believe me, after cleaning a big house all day, cooking is fun. You clean the house? Morning till night. But a little honest work never hurt anybody. Market, I'd like you to send over an order and charge it to Mrs. Philip Brentwood Carrington III. Like, uh, two loaves of white bread. Ready? I think you gotta admit that Mrs. Philip Brentwood Carrington III ain't your average run-of-the-mill, everyday rich Beverly Hills Society woman. Yeah, a grand name like that. And she says, just call me Aggie. <laughs> Jethro. Greetings, dear boy. Howdy. Oh, why so glum? I was hoping the new neighbor would have a pretty mate, but I didn't see one. Jethro, did I hear you say something about a new neighbor? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale. She's just settling in. Uh, the moving man told me her name was uh, Mrs. Philip Brentwood Carrington III. Carrington? Carrington. See, that name rings a bell. Jethro. If you are lonesome for feminine companionship, come to my place this evening. Do you have a pretty maid? <laughs> I got it. Carrington, Mrs. Philip B., widow, financial rating triple A, between 23 and 24. So young. What young? That's how many millions she's got. Well, well, how old a woman is she? Who cares? With that kind of money, she's in the prime of her life. <laughs> oh, hi, folks. Oh, uh, oh Mr. Clavett. Excuse me a minute. I want to wave goodbye to Miss Carrington. What? Bye, Aggie. Hurry back. <laughs> that was Mrs. Philip B. Carrington III? Yep. But she asked us to call her Aggie. Awful nice woman. Come on in. Chief, you're trembling. Romance does that to me. Romance? Jed and Mrs. Carrington. They're perfectly mated. 50 million and 24 million. Oh, marriages like that are made in Fort Knox. Oh, gee, that's heaven. It must be. When may I have something to eat? When the market delivers the groceries. But I'm famished. So go pick them up. I am not employed to do marketing. Look, Field Marshal, I can't cook them if I ain't got them, right? You're splashing my boots. How can Mrs. Carrington abide such a, a slovenly domestic? Oh, you ought to see the domestics next door. A cook and a caretaker straight out of Tobacco Road. He hasn't shaved in a week and she wears army shoes. You should apply for work there. You'd fit right in. Raj, why don't we stop this bickering? Why don't we just step outside and settle this man to man? Well, for one thing, we're a man short. Fake it. <laughs> don't get run over by a shopping cart, Tarzan. <laughs> Howdy, Aggie. Granny, come on in. Thank you. Did your groceries come yet? Uh, no, the chauffeur just went to pick them up. Well, I brought you a little treat. Some clam chowder. Clam chowder? No, clam. He was a goat. <laughs> he got mean and I made soup out of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead and eat some if you want to. Uh, 
no, no. I'll wait for the chauffeur. He's hungry, too. You're a fine woman, Aggie. I like you. Well, thank you, Granny. Come on and sit down. No, no, no. You're busy with your scrubbing. Can I help you? Oh, no, no. No, I'll get it done. Come on right over here and sit down. Oh, wee, my dogs are killing me. Ah. A woman with a big mansion like this and all them millions, I'm surprised that you ain't got four or five scrub women and maids a helping you. Mrs. Philip Brentwood Carrington III does not throw her money around recklessly. I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> Jed feels the same way. Jed? My son-in-law. You met him this morning. Oh, the fellow with the... And, uh... <laughs> That's him. The good-looking one. <laughs> yeah. He's a widower, you know. Really? Hard worker, just like you. Morning till night, taking care of that big place. You can't hardly find a man like Jed no more. Not in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I hear you're a widow. Yeah. Where'd you hear that? Mr. Drysdale. Oh, he says he knows all about you. Says you're a fine woman. Well, who is he? What's he do? He's a bank president. <laughs> He's over to our house a lot. Comes over to talk with Jed about all of his millions. You ought to get better acquainted with Jed. He's a fine catch. Uh-huh. That man can do anything. Pick a squirrel out of a tree at 200 yards. Put an edge on a plow that would cut through a hickory root. Plays the harmonica. Makes his shoes. Sounds like a real winner. Come on over and get a queen. Oh, I'd like to, but I got to... Oh, my back is killing me. Rheumatiz. Well, something like that. You come on over, honey. I got some medicine that'll fix you up. Make it myself. Is it any good? Good! I've had rheumatiz for 40 years. Loved every minute of it. <laughs> well, Miss Hathaway, what's the news? How is that flaming romance coming along? What flaming romance? Jed Clampett and Mrs. Carrington. We've got to keep that affair at white heat. Chief, she came over to use the telephone. Right. And we mustn't let it cool down. <laughs> By George, I got a great idea. Let's have the wedding here in the bank. When? Yes, they can be married in the vault. <laughs> oh, it will be a beautiful ceremony. Do you, 50 million, take this 24 million to be your lawfully wedded co-depositor? <laughs> for better or worse, for richer or richer. <laughs> get, get a hold of yourself. Oh, excuse me, I'm an incurable romantic. <laughs> the fact is, we don't even know what Mrs. Carrington looks like. Well, she's beautiful, terrific figure. How do you know? I've got her picture right here. That is a financial report. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? <laughs> and look at that cash on hand. What a figure. <laughs> Chief, I'm becoming seriously concerned about you. Your obsession with money is reaching psychotic proportions. And look at those tax-free municipals. Chief. And of course, after they're married, we'll get some great tax benefits from... Chief. <laughs> you need professional help. Okay. Hire anyone you need. I want the biggest wedding in town. <laughs> now, in the meantime, you go on up there and you start playing Cupid. If you can get those two married, by the time we post statements on Friday, there'll be a big bonus in it. I don't want a bonus. I'm not offering you one. The bonus is for me. <laughs> You're supposed to be up there promoting the romance of the century. I would hardly call the mercenary matching of Mr. Clampett and Mrs. Carrington romance. No? Well, what's your idea of romance? Hmm. Romeo and Juliet, Tristan and Isolde, Venus and Adonis, Eloise and Abelard. Baloney. I'll bet Clampett and Carrington have got more money than all of them put together. <laughs> Gee, this is getting worse. Please, let me call a psychiatrist. What for? Two people can have all the money in the world and still not be happy. 
I think you'd better call a psychiatrist. You're cracking up. <laughs> First, uh, drive me to the Clampets. We've got to keep fanning those flames of love. You don't know the meaning of the word. If people are in love, they can be deliriously, ecstatically happy without a penny to their name. I'll drive. You lie down in the back seat. <laughs> No trace of that goat, Granny, but he'll probably turn up around supper time. You can bet on it. <laughs> Sit down. I want to talk to you. What about? About that fine, big, strapping, hard-working, rich widow woman that moved in next door to us. Granny, you ain't going to commence matchmaking again, are you? Of course not. She can have her pick of any man in Beverly Hills. Then let her do the picking. She'll get snapped up quick enough. A woman like me as Philip Brentwood Carrington III don't have to beat the bushes with no stick to get herself a husband. Who are you pouring that for? Oh, that's for Miss Carrington. I think she's going to drop over. She will if she drinks that. <laughs> and she'll lay there for a spell. Hi there. Well, Aggie, Jed was just talking about you dropping over. Howdy, man. Uh, don't let me interrupt anything. Oh, no, no. Jed was just leaving to go upstairs and shave and change his clothes. Ain't you, Jed? Well, I reckon I am. Excuse me, lady. I thought I'd give that rheumatism medicine a try. It's right here. Sit down. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you think about Jed? Handsome devil, ain't he? Well, he's all right if you like that rugged type. You will. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Feeling better, Miss Hathaway? I feel fine. Thank goodness. For a while there, you were talking out of your head, saying wild, crazy things like, money can't buy happiness. <laughs> Love is more important than money. You know, raving. <laughs> I was obviously delirious. Well, the next time you feel one of those spells coming on, you rush down to the vault and take a couple of deep whiffs of new money. <laughs> Clears your head like that. Oh, bring the flowers and candy, will you? I've got the jewelry and perfume. Chief, may I point out that Mr. Clampett may resent your implication that he doesn't know how to court a woman? Well, he doesn't. Not a woman like Mrs. Philip Brentwood Carrington III. She's used to being showered with gifts and attention. Oh, we've got to get those two lovebirds to the altar before estimated tax returns are due. Well, I suppose the ceremony will be performed by a CPA. Can they do that? <laughs> Hi, folks. Come on in. Thank you. Hey, I see you're wearing your Sunday best. Are you planning to call on Mrs. Carrington? Oh, as a matter of fact, she's sitting out in the kitchen jawing with Granny. Oh, good, good. What's all this? Flowers and candy? Who first? I think I'd better let Mr. Drysdale explain that. <clears throat> well, actually, they're for you, Mr. Clampett. Me? Yes. Mr. Drysdale left. Uh... <laughs> you see, here in the city, things move at a faster pace than you used to back in the hills. Now, back there, if you liked someone, you'd probably invite them to take a walk on Sunday afternoon, shoot them a rabbit or something. But out here, you have to shower them with gifts and attention. Now, now, in addition to the flowers and candy, I've taken the liberty of picking this out for you. Beautiful, isn't it? Mr. Drysdale. Oh, oh. And some perfume. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale. I... Yes. <laughs> Just shoot me a rabbit. <laughs> Clampett, these aren't for you. These are for you to give to Mrs. Carrington. What for? Well, you like her, don't you? Don't know her. Well, let me tell you about her. Oh, what a lovely woman. She's got everything. Wealth, culture, breeding, education, money. Lots of money. Beauty, sophistication. A princess, Mr. Clampett. A veritable princess. <laughs> it was very nice of you to send those kids over to do my work for me. 
I just love sitting here with you like this, talking, discussing things, and belting down this great sauce. <laughs> Make this stuff, Granny. <laughs> Here I am, Maggie, just fetching my yard goods. How's your back? What back? <laughs> well, oh, mine. Oh, it's great. You know, you're right about this stuff. It makes having rheumatism a ball. <laughs> just sip it, honey. Don't go it. Okay. Now, let's get back to Jim. Would you like to step out with him tonight? No, thanks. Gulp it. <laughs> Gee, that's beautiful material. That reminds me of Hawaii. I used to have a moo like this. A what? A moo Go back to shipping, honey. There ain't no cows this color. <laughs> no, no, a moo is something you wear. Like a loose sarong. Ever see a hula dance? No. How do they dance? <laughs> a hula is a dance. They do it in Hawaii. Jed's an awful good dancer. You should see him do the Cumberland Clod Kicker. I can't wait. I'll go fetch him. No, no, no. Don't, don't bother. Why don't you learn him the hula? Take him to that Hawaii place tonight and dance up a storm. No, thanks. <laughs> Gulp a little. <laughs> I tell you, Mr. Clampett, if I weren't a married man, I'd be in that kitchen on my knees asking that remarkable little woman to be my bride. You talking about Aggie or Granny? <laughs> I'm talking about Aggie. Why, she was the toast of Europe. Every man in Paris was after her. No offense, but they must have been kind of short of women. <laughs> Would you like to wait in the car? No, I'm enjoying this tremendously. Out! <laughs> now, Mr. Clark, think of your daughter, Ellie. Think how wonderful it would be to have a mother like Mrs. Carrington. Who could teach her the social graces? Mold that child in her own image. Why, in a little while, Ellie would be just like her. Sweet. Refined, a perfect little lady. Mm. <laughs> I better fetch Jim. <laughs> You've had enough of this. Get yourself some buttermilk from the ice box. <laughs> buttermilk from the ice box. It could be the start of a beautiful account. <laughs> Courtship. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, I thought Granny was a matchmaker, but you take the rag off in the bush. Where's Jed? Jed, where are you going? I'm going upstairs and lock myself in my room. It ain't safe to be single around here. But Aggie's waiting for you in the kitchen, and she ain't gonna keep you well. <laughs> I'm Melvin Drysdale. Milby, baby, I'm your Aggie. <laughs> but, but these gifts. <laughs> oh, that's awful sweet of you, honey. But let's cool a lean. <laughs> Agnes, you are to come home immediately. Mrs. Carrington just arrived. Who? What? Oh, no. Money bags to go pell her papayas. I have just snagged me a rich banker. <laughs> I'll never know what he sees in that one. It's gonna be hard to break the news to Ms. Drysdale. <laughs> Now 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmwise presentation.